So this is a bit of an unusual talking point, but when we're dealing with the philosophy of free will versus sovereign election, there are certain conundrums and philosophical issues that people try to resolve with this debate. And I find that free will doesn't really answer some of the conundrums that it seems to think it answers, if, if that makes sense. So, to give you a bit of perspective on this, Free Will Freddy's raised various conundrums about Chosen Charlie's model by saying that sovereign election makes God the author of sin, or God wants the gospel to be preached to all these people, yet at the same time is preventing them from believing it, or God is holding man accountable for doing actions that they have no real control over. Now, in reaction to this, the Chosen Charlies might raise their own set of conundrums with Free Will Freddy's position, because they might say that it makes God look seemingly incompetent or incapable or in impotent to act. He hates all of this evil going on, and he wants people to be saved so desperately but he just can't seem to get what he wants and free will seems to be an obstacle to God getting what he wants, even though he's God and in theory should be able to get anything he wants. Now, what I would say is that perhaps some of the free will sort of leaning end of folk don't seem to realise that many of their objections that they throw at Chosen Charlie's view of election is that some of those, or even all of those same objections still apply under his own free will view of things and so i find with this whole debate is that often the free will freddies and the chosen charlies are inventing problems that didn't exist and then they're warring at each other and anathematizing each other and criticizing each other because they can't decide how to fix it when i find that they haven't really resolved the problem anyway when when you look at it in a roundabout way so i'll give you some examples so, Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the garden, the free will Freddies say that you can't possibly believe that they didn't do it out of a, a free will decision choice. So are you suggesting that Adam and Eve were forced to sin, is what they might ask Chosen Charlie. Well, look at it this way. Even the free will Freddies will agree that we will one day be in a glorified state someday and when that happens we won't ever sin again and i assume by extension we won't ever choose to sin again right well so i'll ask this question hypothetically why won't you ever sin again if you believe that you have all of this choice and this free will well the answer is because you will be good the body of sin will be no more. So there is no desire to even want to choose to do evil anymore. Well, when Adam and Eve sinned, they were made good. They, were, they weren't they were made in sin. So how did good people come about to make sinful decisions? Well, ultimately, it's because they were deceived by Satan. And even if you want to attribute their fall to a free will decision, because you really have a problem with the idea of God setting them up to fail, well, you still have to deal with the fact that God put or allowed the snake in the garden, knowing that it would deceive them into sin. Now, think about it this way. He didn't need to put the snake there they could have still had just as much free will decisionism but just without putting that satanic deception in the garden to deceive them so they'd still have choice they'd still have free will but nobody would deceive them into making the wrong choice right so often when people are arguing about these things free will doesn't change the fact that god created a would-be fallen angel put it in the garden allowing it to deceive man and knowing that it would deceive man into choosing the wrong decision 
to create the need for a saviour that already did the works to fix sin before the foundation of the world, before that all even happened. And so you really still have the same conundrum. You haven't actually fixed any philosophical problem there. You, you're just sort of going round in a wheel and trying to argue about it from the other side of Chosen Charlie, but it still comes back round to the same problem, if, if that makes sense, what I'm trying to articulate there. I've also spoke previously in the series about the issue of the tribesman on an island who has never heard of Jesus. And Free Will Freddy says that it's almost outrageous in a way that God could not choose him for salvation and that he could die and be judged without the chance to believe the gospel. And as I kind of voiced before, and I'm sure someone will explain it in the comments, but I cannot comprehend how Free Will actually solves that problem because the problem is already built into the question what about the man who has never heard of jesus free will doesn't magically mean then that he's heard of jesus okay and so i don't understand what free will doctrine changes about the premise of that question particularly you know does the claim that we have free will change the fact that he's never heard the gospel and if it if it does I don't really understand why the question matters then, because either everybody's heard the gospel or we have to contend with the fact that some people haven't heard the gospel. But if we have this premise that we have free will, we all have a fair chance to be saved, but then there are still people who have never heard of Jesus. Well, then in reality, you can't exactly say that they've had a fair chance to believe, because how can they make a choice without knowing that there was a choice that even could be made, if, if that makes sense. You know, a, a tribesman, for example, a tribesman on an island can't choose what model of mobile phone he wants or what insurance plan he has. How can he choose to believe on a name that he's never heard? As, as it's written, how then shall they call upon him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him in who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And even for the person who has heard of the gospel and rejects it of, of their own uh, free will, let's say, they'll, they'll give their list of reasons, right? You know, I just don't think the Bible is very scientific or I've had a very hard life and I just can't accept that there's a God who allows this to happen or that cares for me or, you know, I have everything I have. I, 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 I Sorry, I have everything I need in life. What do I need God for? What has he done for me? You know, these are some of the options objections that you might have and if that's just a matter of free will but god's desire is that he wants them to be saved i guess my question to god then would be well why couldn't you make the bible and science a little bit more compatible with each other for instance couldn't the fossil layers be a bit more mixed up a little bit so that we have more dinosaur fossils among human fossils, you know, mix things up. Or why can't we make radiometric dating seem far younger? Why does the universe look like it's really old when we do all of these radiometric dates? Why can't it just look younger? In, if, if God designed the universe, he could just make it look like that, right? We, we'd still have the free will choice that we have now, presumably, but the correct choice would seem more plausible to the scientific mind. Another question we could ask is, well, why didn't God put the soul of that person who has had a hard life and thinks that the world is cruel, why not put them in somebody else's body and somebody else's experience so that they wouldn't have a miserable life that would put them off believing? They'd still hold all the same choice, but without the thing that's hanging them up from being saved. Or the guy who's rich and has everything that he needs in life. Well, why not just send a hurricane to blow down his house so that he'd have nothing holding him in the way of his salvation? And then they'd still have all of this free will, but without the thing that's a stumbling block for them that's causing them not to believe, if that makes sense. And so, as I've said in the series before, because I think some of the videos that I've published so far People are a bit on edge and thinking that I'm a bit Calvinist or that I'm denying any potential for any choice or any ability to make a choice or that we have any free will. 
I know that's maybe more the Sovereign Grace position, but as I've said, I'm not hard-leaning Sovereign Grace. I have a slightly more balanced view about this, in my opinion. But what I'm trying to say is that I just don't think that free will is entirely free. That That's just the easiest way to describe it. Trying to say it without sounding like I'm using word salad. It's really hard, actually. Because the definition of free will, technically, is that you can act or make choices unimpeded by fate without being externally constrained or coerced. And therein lies the problem, is that we are externally constrained or coerced to some extent. We spent our entire Christian life being deceived by the devil, who is in control of this world. He controls the airwaves, he controls the politics, he controls religion. And we are constantly bombarded with all of his untruths, all of his fake gospels, all of his fake religions, all of his fake morality. For example, a lot of adult cartoons such as The Simpsons or South Park or American Dad or Futurama, they all have episodes where the salvation of a not-so-righteous character, let's say, is at stake, or they feature the devil as being in charge of hell. Well, besides the fact that Satan ruling over hell is actually not biblical at all, nothing in the Bible suggests anything like that, the character whose salvation is at stake, in, in the episode where that, that's featured, he has to do some kind of good deed to redeem himself, or he needs some sort of get-out-of-jail clause, whether it's Homer Simpson, or Stan, or Bender the, the robot, or whatever it is. They always have to do some sort of good deed to get themselves out of that situation. And so, when you look at non-Christians, or people who are only cultural Christians, and couldn't even tell you the basics of Christianity, what do they think? They think that Satan is in charge of hell, and they think that God will let us into heaven by good deeds. Because everything they know comes from television. People like Hitler and Stalin go to hell, ordinary people sat at home go to heaven. You know, that's, that's how a lot of people think that it should work. And even when we get to Christianity... There are so many denominations, so many different versions of it. All of these claims, oh, we're the true church that Jesus founded because he, you know, let's blow off the dust of some history books in our library, that proves it. Or, no, we're the true church because we're following Christ's teachings and we obsess about this one thing that nobody else obsesses about, like the Sabbath or the name of Jehovah or whatever it is. Or, on a planet of eight billion people, God has chosen me to be special and I know what the crack is. There are people who think like that, believe it or not. And work salvation and conditional security comes at you from all of these different angles, with all of their quote mind verses and intellectual word salad. And some of you, your faith hangs by a thread, and some of you are terrified that everything you know and believe might be wrong. What if free grace is wrong? What if we're wrong about all of these verses and wrong about salvation and everything? And even among people who proclaim salvation by grace with no strings attached, they fall out about this issue and that issue quite abruptly. So hyper grace is falling out with conventional free grace. Sovereign grace is falling out with free will, free grace, falling out over chastisement and this, that and the other. And yet, having said all of that, Satan is kept in subjection to God himself, which we can read about in the book of Job. But there are other passages that teach on this as well. Now, one of the biggest contentions that lends itself to free will is that issue of accountability. This idea that if we don't truly have free will, we can't be held accountable for our decisions. But even if you want to come at it from that angle, even under the free will system, the devil was put in the garden with God knowing what would happen and allowed to deceive and then was cast down to earth where we are and continues to deceive even now. And so even according to free will decisionism, some way or another, everybody has to shift the blame for their terrible decisions. You know, if, if you're arguing that sovereign election maybe puts the blame for sin and Eve's decision on God, well, 
the thing is, Eve passed the blame on to Satan, even under the free will system. We, we end up shifting the blame for our free will choices. In the garden, the man blamed the woman for being deceived. The woman blamed the devil for deceiving her. The devil cast doubt on what God said. And God punished all three of them. And so a lot of these conundrums that the free will position tries to solve, such as man's accountability for his sin or God being the author of sin and evil or, or a fair chance for everybody to be saved. It, it really doesn't fix any of these conundrums. It, it really just comes back round to the same problem in a roundabout sort of way, I believe. The devil was sent to deceive. Men constantly have excuses for their sins because they can't bear the accountability when he is right in his own eyes, as the Bible says. The languages were scrambled at the Tower of Babel and for thousands of years communication over large distances to spread the gospel was very limited. Because, you see, they're trying to analyse and rationalise based on the symptoms rather than the root of the issue. And so I'd really just close by saying that the root of the issue is that free will or not, or whatever your views on free will and wherever you are on the spectrum about this, it still comes down to one fundamental problem. Deceived, corrupt people make deceived, corrupt choices. And yet being deceived and corrupt, every man is right in his own eyes. So to wrap it all up, if you've know if, if you been watching my series and, and you are heavily free will leaning and you interpret predestination election through that lens, like, I'm not personally against you. Um, I just struggle with some of the credibility of some of the arguments that are being put forth. And when it comes down to these sorts of questions, you know, what about accountability? I, I just don't think that it really solves these problems. It's almost as if people just think spouting the word free will with a full stop at the end solves the problem. Uh, and it really doesn't. We, we still have the same problem in, in a roundabout sort of way. 